close-up is brought to you by the Kia Sorento R. Redefining the power of Kia. Corporal Luke Tamatia, 31. Lance Corporal Jacinda Baker, 36. And Private Richard Harris, 31. Three young lives lost in the service of their country. They died in Afghanistan. We lost another two only a fortnight ago, which of course raises questions about our role there. But when a serving New Zealand serviceman or woman dies in action, one of the first people contacted is the Prime Minister. That's what happened last night, the call that John Key dreaded. It's just awful. I mean, it's a horrible situation because your immediate thoughts go to the family. Do you ring the families? I, I usually try and go and visit the families, um, so I'll be doing that in this case as well. Uh, I often try and go and sit down, have a chat to them obviously, um, talk, talk about the situation, um, offer my uh, deepest condolences on behalf of the country, uh, thank them for the brave, brave service of their, their daughter or son. Because the decisions you make as Prime Minister could end up costing people's lives. I think that's right, and so we take those decisions very seriously. Um, we act on the best advice that we can, and for instance, when I redeployed the SAS, uh, when we first became the government in 2008, 2009, um, I really thought through those decisions. I did so in the knowledge that there was a real risk that we could lose people, uh, and ultimately uh, we did and so I have to take the responsibility for that. I guess if there's a counter that you try and weigh up, it's that if we take ourselves all the way back to why we're in Afghanistan, it was a UN mandated mission that was trying to ensure that the likes of Al-Qaeda couldn't use that as a staging post for global terrorist activity, which has also claimed the lives of other New Zealanders. But since then, other countries have changed their minds on this, haven't they? I mean, the Dutch have pulled out. What yeah. are we still doing there? So for the most part, um, New Zealand has been joined alongside about 50, I think, other forces, and they've stayed there. And the work we've been doing at one level has made a huge difference. I mean, when you go to Afghanistan, Bamiyan province now, 10-year-old girls can go to school. Um, you can have a situation where people can follow their religious faiths. You've got economic development. But I think in the end, of course, New Zealand could just say, well, you know, we're leaving. Um, and we're going to leave tomorrow afternoon type of argument. But I, I don't think that would either honour the deaths or be the right thing for New Zealand to do. Are those things worth Kiwi lives? Well, I th you have to take a step back and say that if you look at pretty much every global terrorist action that you can name, New Zealanders have also lost their lives in those activities. So whether it's the Bali bombings or the London bombings or 9-11, New Zealanders died in those events. And so... In, in essence, what you're trying to do is globally syndicate risk is the way I see it, and globally countries coming together, in the case of Afghanistan, large numbers of countries, to try and provide a stable operating environment in Afghanistan. Now, I, everybody knows the history of Afghanistan, everybody knows the challenges in that country, uh, and th those things are, are, are well known. Uh, but New Zealand has always played its part in the world, and um, we've... I, th I think we, we can take a lot of pride in what we've achieved there and what we've done. But if it was so worthwhile doing this, why are we pulling out? Well, it's, it's not us doing it on our own. I think the world has said, look, after a decade and literally thousands of people that have lost their lives there, we've given it our best shot to try and improve the situation in Afghanistan. It's important to understand that we work alongside all of these other countries for what we believe is in New Zealand's long-term interest, because New Zealanders are prolific travellers, they're around the world and they're exposed to these events. And, and we, we believe in a, in a world which, where there is freedom and where people um, can go about their lives without being at threat of global terrorists. Do they believe in freedom and democracy in Afghanistan? I mean, the Karzai government even would say is corrupt. Some of their laws, the, the Sharia law, is totally unacceptable to us. <laughs> yeah. Are so we there'll... comfortable with being there? Well, there will always be situations in Afghanistan, there will be you know, a different set of rules, if you like, there to what we might think is normal in New Zealand. But can it be a place where uh, there can be more stability, where people can have more equality of opportunity in terms of boys and girls and, and their development in that country? I think the answer is yes, that's possible. In the meantime, are you prepared to accept the risk that we could lose more people in that time? Well, there is a genuine risk that we could lose more people. All I can say as a politician um, that I take the, uh, the best advice I can from the Chief of Defence Force about whatever 
I, it is within my power to provide the greatest level of security for our men and women that are on the ground in Afghanistan. I say to the Chief of Defence Force, um, make sure that there's a thorough review. Tell me if there are any, any areas we, we can do better, do more, have greater capability, whatever it might be, to try and provide the best operating environment we can in what is a very dangerous and, and volatile situation. I believe we're doing that. You have said we're not going to cut and run. Correct. We're not going to do that. But you're bringing our exit as far forward as you possibly can. Isn't that the same thing? <laughs> no, it's in line with where the early transition provinces, and bamiyan has been one of those, um, fits. Basically, we've been looking at both of those options, April or September. There's merits of either. Again, the advice I've had from the Chief of Defence is it, it's, it's not a simple process. It's, it's months of work. Um, it's, there's a significant investment in both personnel, equipment and bases up there. You would like them home as soon as possible? Well of course I would um, because you know, like any New Zealander I feel the enormous pain of, of, of losing our brave men and women and it's under my watch as Prime Minister and I have to take responsibility for that. But nevertheless, um, I also have to take the responsibility for the wider interests of New Zealand and New Zealanders. And I try and balance those things as best I possibly can. We live in a world where we're a small country. We work alongside partners like Australia and the UK and, and the US. And when the going gets tough and there's a earthquake in Christchurch, all of our mates turn up and help us. So it's a club. Um, it's a big club in the case of Afghanistan. It's 50 odd countries. So that, that's the balancing act you have. Well, the Prime Minister there a little early this evening. Now, as Prime Minister, he makes the political decisions. But as you heard, when it comes to military matters, he takes his advice from the CDF, the Chief of the Defence Forces, who is Lieutenant General Rhys Jones. He joins me now. I just want to correct one thing too, of course. Um, Jacinda Baker was 26, sadly. Um, you have to deliver the news to the families. I mean, you've spoken to them personally. I have to all three families. Uh, each of them, of course, are sad, and uh, and it's a tragic time to be able to talk to them. But um, they understand what their children were doing. They are quite proud of their kids, and uh, their kids had all passed on. That they were. Uh, proud of what they were achieving over in Afghanistan. There is a wider family here as well, if I can put it that way, the military family. I mean, the people at Burn and the people who've served with them, how are they coping tonight? Yeah, it's tragic. We're a small military. We're only 10,000 uniformed people. So these guys were known to us. They, um, they were liked by us. They were well respected. So to have these three, as well as the two a couple of weeks ago, um, die, that, that is pretty tragic and it hits hard. Five people lost in a fortnight. That's half the total casualties, the total deaths, from the entire time you've been in Afghanistan. There must be something wrong there. It's a case of uh, the Taliban are saying, this is a zone that has been successful. It's been declared as one of the early transition uh, provinces. They want to show that there's no safe place in Afghanistan. So there is a deliberate effort to target these tall poppies and say, we're going to uh, have a go at them and we're going to show that uh, Taliban can, can stay around. Are we being, are your troops being targeted specifically, do you believe? In our area they are, but, but not because we're New Zealanders, because of the success that we've achieved there. The troops who go over there, what do you tell them before they go? I mean, do you actually lay it out and say, listen, you may not come back? Yeah, we, we don't pull any punches. We're very clear that this is a combat zone. Uh, only on Thursday I was uh, talking to a group who were preparing to go up for the next rotation. And we did talk about those threats, the reality, the increased uh, uh, activities that's going on. John Key said, he wants to know from you, if there's anything you need, if there's anything that needs to be done, do it. Do you need more troops to protect the ones we've got? There are some modifications that we can make, and over the last uh, few uh, weeks we have been talking to the government, even before uh, our first couple of deaths of a couple of weeks ago. We're always modifying what we do, always looking at our tactics and processes, so we constantly come back to the government and, and ask for change. There's also a sense that we're underprotected, that the equipment we have is not up to scratch, that the New Zealand Army or the New Zealand Defence Forces have a reputation as being on the scrounge of it. Is that a factor up there? Do they not have the gear they need, Lieutenant General? No, no, we're very well equipped. Certainly our, our individual kits, world class, uh, our light armoured vehicles are very good for that terrain. Um, the issue is probably the Hummers that we're using. This is the case of uh, there are places that larger vehicles, be they light armoured vehicles or the mine resistant vehicles or, or any other type of large vehicle can't go. So we need to operate smaller vehicles um, and the, the Hummer is the reality of where we need to go. We know the limitations, but 
We've got to uh, fit that compromise. And finally, will you send in more troops? I'm providing some advice to the government about what we can do. Um, some of them involves increases in certain areas, yeah. Lieutenant General Rhys-Jones, appreciate your time tonight. Thank you.